speaking. Can I help you? Yes, this is Miranda. Is Ray there? Hi, Miranda. I'm afraid Dr. Fraser is not available at the moment. Not available? What do you mean? He's out of the office. I see. What time will he be back? He should be back by four. Would you like to leave a message? Hmm. Yes. Tell him that I'm not well. Yes, I have a splitting headache, and I will not be able to go to Al's dinner this evening. Fine. I'll give him the message. No, just a minute. Please tell him to call me back. Sure. Bye. Bye. Hi, this is Miranda Cunningham. Hi, this is Sue. Ah, Sue, glad to hear you. Can you put me through to Ray? I'm sorry, but I would like to speak to Linda, if I may. Linda? Huh? Linda? Linda? I'm sorry, but Linda is not in at the moment. Can I take a message? No, I'll ring back later. It's a personal matter, you see. Bye. A personal matter, you see. Let me just discover what this personal matter is. Hi, everybody. What are you doing? Ah, you have to make some phone calls. Good, because our workout today is exactly about that. Let's get ready then. Today we are going to learn about asking for someone on the phone, inquiring when you can find him or her, leaving a message. Miranda calls Sue and asks, "Is Ray there?" But do you remember what Sue says? Yes, very good. He is not available. You can say, "Is Ray there?" Is Ray available? Can I speak to Ray? And I would like to speak to Ray, if I may. As you have seen, he is out of the office, which is almost the same as he is not in, and he's not in his office at the moment. When someone is not available, you may ask, "What time will he be back?" Or, "When can I find him?" Sue says, "I hope he'll be back by." Remember, right by four. You are brilliant. Sue asks if Miranda wants to leave a message. Would you like to leave a message? Or can I take a message? You can also say, "Would you like to leave your phone number?" After leaving a message, Miranda changes her mind and tells Sue, "Please, tell him to call me back." Can you guess how you can say it in another way? Can you tell him to give me a call, or can you tell him that his wife called? The caller may also say, "I'll ring later," or "I'll give him a ring later." Sue does not want to leave a message because it's a personal matter. That is something private that she cannot say to everybody. Where do you think Ray is, and why does Sue want to talk to Linda? That's a big mystery, don't you think? Anyway, as our time is over, I have to say goodbye. I agree. I don't think that last match was up to standard. I think Chelsea can do much better. You're quite right. Are you coming to next month's match? You bet. How could I miss it? I can buy the tickets for both of us if you wish. Wow, that would be great. I can't wait. Nor can I. I'm in a bit of a hurry. I have an appointment later on. Okay, let's get down to business. Right. We would like to order some stockings and silk tops. Valentine's Day is coming up, and there is an increasing demand on these kinds of items. How many would you like? That depends on your terms. What discount do you offer on orders for over 100 items? We can offer you a five percent discount. 
We had a 5% discount last time. We expected to get a higher discount on a repeat order. Hmm. We can give you another 2% discount if you pay within a week from delivery. We are going to open up some new shops in the area. If the price is good, we are going to give you a lot of our business. I see. Maybe we could offer you free delivery? Hmm, interesting. Let me check with our head office. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. That sounds good. So, you'll book the tickets, right? Sure, I bet we win. Bye. Hi, I'm really glad to meet you again. How is your English? Are you practicing it regularly? Well, I am sure that you are making good progress. Today, we are going to deal with a rather delicate subject, how to bargain with someone, that is, to reach an agreement. You will learn how to ask for a discount, to discuss money matters, and to reach an agreement. As you saw, Lucy wants to order some stockings and silk tops. Can you remember why she needs them? Right, because it's almost Valentine's Day, and there is an increasing demand for this kind of item. Demand is a strong request. An item means something that belongs to a group of articles. Before placing her order, she wants to know about the terms, that is, Roberto's requirements or conditions. She asks, what discount do you offer on orders for over 100 items? A discount is a reduction in the usual price. You can say, offer or give a discount. For example, they usually give a discount to students. There is a 20% discount on all items until the end of the month. Roberto can offer her a 5% discount. Lucy is not satisfied because she expected to get a higher discount for what? A repeat order. Good. Do you know what a repeat order is? When you frequently place an order with the same dealer, that is a repeat order. Both Roberto and Lucy try to find possible solutions to the problem at hand. Roberto says, we can give you another 2% discount if you pay within one week from delivery. Delivery is the act of taking goods to their destination. Lucy says they are going to open new shops in the area and if the price is good, I'm sure we are going to give you a lot of our business. This means that they may make many orders with Roberto's company in the future. You can also say, I am sure we are going to give you consistent business or we've got an excellent reputation and we are expanding rapidly. Roberto offers her free delivery, that is, delivery without payment, and Lucy seems quite interested. Finally, Roberto says, let me check with our head office. The head office is the most important office of an organization or company or the people working there. I am sorry, but our time is over. Bye, and see you soon. I'll be happy to tell you about our facilities. Good. Do you already work out? Not much. I'm very busy. And I'm afraid I am out of shape. Don't worry. You'll be in shape in a few weeks. In our fitness centre, we have a dedicated weight area. A personal trainer is always on hand to give you advice about weights and fitness equipment. What fitness classes do you run? We have an aerobic studio where you can attend many kinds of classes. Aerobics, martial arts, kickboxing, yoga and so on. What about the Paradise Wellness? 
In the Paradise Wellness, there is our relaxing area with sauna, hot tub, and Arctic and tropical showers. Mmm, wonderful. And what changing facilities do you have? We have changing rooms with showers and private lockers. Mmm, good. You look very fit. Um, I go to the disco every Saturday. That keeps me fit. Well, that's very interesting. Could we talk about it later on? Later on? I think we can begin with our core fitness class that starts right now. Later on, if you still have sufficient strength left, we can talk about it then, okay? Okay. Hi, how are you? I hope you are feeling fine because this is a very lively workout. We are going to talk about going to the gym and what you can do there. Ready? Today, you are going to learn terms related to the gym, how to define your fitness condition, and finally, the names of various classes. As you saw, Al decided to go to a gym because he is out of shape, which means that he is not doing physical exercise. Or, if you are overweight, you are out of shape as well. Can you guess what the opposite of out of shape is? Right, in shape. You can also say fit and toned. Fit means healthy and strong, especially as a result of exercise, while toned means having a firm and strong body. For example, I jog to keep fit. If you do physical exercise regularly, you will be in great shape soon. The staff of a gym includes instructors and personal trainers. Personal trainers can give advice on weights and fitness equipment that are suitable for you. I'm your personal trainer for the English language, so let's keep practicing it. Every gym runs classes of various kinds. Al can attend many kinds of classes, aerobics, martial arts, kickboxing, and yoga. After every workout, a session of exercises, you may need to relax a bit. In Chloe's gym, there is a sauna, hot tub, and arctic and tropical showers. A hot tub is a large container full of hot water where more than one person can sit. How I would like to be there right now. Can you imagine having arctic and tropical showers? Great! Obviously, there are also changing rooms where you can dress and undress and showers and private lockers. A locker is a small cupboard where someone can keep their possessions. As you understand, you need to work out in order to be fit. And you also need to exercise if you want to learn more of the English language. So, I'll see you soon for another training session. Bye. What's the matter, Lucy? Oh, I don't know. I went to the gym and now I feel awful. How long did you stay there? Oh, an hour, maybe two. Two hours? Don't you think that's too much? It was your first time, right? Yeah, yes it was. Let me have a look. Uh, ow, ow! Where does it hurt? Ah, here. Yeah, here. Oh, even here. Ah, oh, it feels sore all over. Can you lift your arm? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Your ankle is swollen. Oh my god, I'm about to die! Oh, it's nothing so serious. Uh, however, you can have an x-ray mm. and also a checkup. Yeah, that's probably a 
Probably a good idea. I can make you an appointment with a doctor, Dr. Peabody. Dr. Peabody? Yes. Miles is one of my oldest friends, and also a very capable doctor. Fine. Ah, Dad, it's so painful. Oh, stop all that complaining, Lucy. I'm sure if we go home and I make something nice to eat, you'll forget all your pains. Something nice to eat? What do you mean? How about a well-done steak and chips? Oh, that sounds great. Absolutely wonderful. Hi, here I am. How are you? I hope everybody's fine. If not, it's not a problem, as today we're going to talk about health problems and how to solve them. We're going to learn how to ask about problems terms and verbs related to health checks, how to describe physical pain. Lucy has just started going to the gym, but she did too much and goes to her father's studio aching from head to foot. Ray asks, what's the matter? You can also say, what seems to be the matter? And can you tell me what's wrong? To gather more specific information about the problem, he asks, where does it hurt? And can you move your arm? You can say, can you move your leg, hand, etc. Lucy says, I'm sore all over. And it's so painful. Sore and painful indicate physical suffering. You can feel sore or painful when you hurt yourself or when, like Lucy, you have done too much physical exercise. When Ray inspects her leg, he discovers that her, can you remember? Right, her ankle is swollen. Swollen means increased in size. Ray suggests making an appointment with Dr. Peabody. When you have a health problem, you make or fix an appointment with a doctor. He also suggests an x-ray. This is an examination that photographs bones and organs. And a checkup, a medical examination to test your general state of health. For example, he goes to the doctor for regular checkups or I need a checkup. When did you have your last checkup? I had one last week, and it seems that I'm in great shape. Well, I'm sorry to say, but our time is over. Keep fit, and I'll meet you in the next workout. Bye. Hi. The traffic is always so bad at lunch time. Where do you usually have lunch? Um, in the park or at the cafe. Why? Does this shop look like a park or a cafe to you? No, it doesn't. There aren't any trees and we don't have a coffee machine. <laughs> Do you think this is an appropriate place to have lunch? Not really, but I'm hungry. I see that. But we do not eat in the shop. The place gets dirty and smells of food afterwards and... Besides, we don't want people to come in and think this is a picnic area. What time do you start work on Tuesdays, Lucy? One o'clock. What time is it now? It's 1.45. You're late. My lunch break starts at one. If you don't arrive on time, I have to eat my lunch here. What's in that baguette anyway? It smells terrible. Egg, mayonnaise and bacon. Do you always have such an unhealthy lunch? Crisps, soft drink, and a baguette loaded with calories. What do you mean? I mean, junk food, it's fattening. Well, so what? I'm not on a diet. Well, I'm sure you don't want to put on weight. Why don't you have something light and healthy, like a, a salad or a low-fat yogurt or a cereal bar? Because I don't like diet food. I like mayonnaise, crisps, and chocolate. But that food isn't good for you. Why do you think they call it junk food? Oh, or maybe you don't ask yourself such complicated questions. Do you know what I ask myself, Lucy? How does your family live with you? You're so mean and rude. <gasps> or maybe you're so hateful because you're jealous of your sister. 
Because your friend David doesn't want to spend any time with you. I'm not surprised he doesn't. Hello and welcome back. Poor Sarah. Lucy really does give her a hard time. But she is always able to put her in her place, isn't she? Well, the topic of today's workout is light food, sometimes called diet food. Light. Now that's a popular word in English. It has many different meanings. For example, light. Or, for smokers, do you have a light? But as an adjective, it describes something that weighs very little. It's very light. When talking about food, light means low fat. Mayonnaise isn't low fat, is it? But Sarah likes it. She's eating a baguette with egg mayonnaise and bacon. Lucy doesn't approve. She says it's unhealthy and it's loaded with calories, which means it has a lot of calories. But Sarah doesn't care because she's not on a diet. Quite right, too. She likes junk food. That's what Lucy calls her lunch. Junk is another word for rubbish. So, junk food is food that is not good for you. Actually, the opposite. In fact, she suggests eating a salad and a low-fat yogurt or a cereal bar for lunch instead of Sarah's baguette, crisps, and soft drink. What do you usually have for lunch? Do you eat light, healthy food? or junk food that's loaded with calories. I mean, let's be honest, it's okay to eat unhealthy food from time to time, but if we don't want to put on weight, then we have to be careful and find the right balance. After all, it's not just about putting on or losing weight. Our health is important too. Well, that's all for today. And whatever you have for lunch, just enjoy it. See you in our next workout. Hi, how can I help you? Ah, uh, yes, I'd like to rent a car for a few days. Fine, what type of car would you like? What's available? I need one for a trip to Land's End. We have a wide range of vehicles available. Saloon cars, mm -hmm. sports cars, convertibles, estate cars, off-roaders. We even have limousines if you want one. <laughs> a limousine? <laughs> no, I think uh, a saloon car will be just fine. Can I see your driving license, please? Oh, sure. Uh, here you are. Hmm. I see. What? Um, I'm sorry, but we cannot accept licenses with too many endorsements. Oh, no. Okay. I'm afraid you will have to reach your destination by train or by coach. And can I purchase the ticket here? Sure. You can buy an open ticket if you want. Okay. I'll go by train then. How long does it take to get there? It's quite a long trip. Five and a half hours. Do I have to change? Yes, you have to change in Reading. And do you have a, a train timetable? Sure. There's a train to Reading almost every 15 minutes from Paddington. Hmm. That's not a big consolation. Hello, everybody. Hmm. Is everything all right? Anyway, you'll soon feel better. Today, we're going to talk about traveling by car, train, and coach. Interesting, isn't it? We're going to learn about renting a car. 
different types of cars, traveling by train and by coach. When you want to rent a car, you should let the representative know your requirements, what kind of vehicle you need, for how long, and where you will be traveling to. As you saw, Adriana wants to rent a car for a trip to Land's End. To rent or hire a car means to pay a certain sum of money to use it for a limited period of time. You can also rent a flat, a room, a bike, etc. A trip is a journey which is usually very short. Every car rental, that is, company that rents cars, has a range of cars available. A range is a group of similar things. Can you remember what types of cars the travel agent mentions in the episode? I'm going to help you. A saloon car, a car which seats four or five people. A sports car, a convertible, a car with a roof that can be folded back. An estate car or station wagon, a car with a lot of space behind the back seat and an extra door at the back for loading the boot. An off-roader, also called 4x4, four four. a vehicle used for traveling over rough ground and even limousines, right. Unfortunately, when Adriana shows the representative her driving license, that is, the official document to drive a car, he discovers that there are endorsements. An endorsement is an official record on a driving license that you have not observed the highway code when driving. Consequently, she cannot rent a car and has to reach her destination by train or by coach. Remember that you say, by car, by train, by boat, but on foot. Adriana asks, do I have to change? When going from one place to another, you may have to change somewhere, and Adriana has to change in Let's see if you remember it. Right, in Reading. Adriana can purchase or buy an open ticket. That is, a ticket with no date. Specified so that you can use it when you want. Oops, sorry, but I have to go. My train leaves in a half an hour. Bye, and see you next time.